Welcome to One Book, One Review. Hey everybody, today's book is A for Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. Before I say anything about the book, I would like to say thanks to Bumblebee for recommending it to me. If you don't know him, check the footnotes for a link to his channel. A for Charing Cross Road is another epistolary novel, a collection of letters between Helene Hanf and Marks & Co. booksellers. Helene Hanf lives in New York, and instead of going to a bookstore a few blocks away, she writes an antiquarian bookseller at 84 Charing Cross Road in London. In case you're not familiar with Charing Cross Road, it's what I lovingly call the book street. It's a street full of bookstores, secondhand and new. In my opinion, every book lover should visit this street when in London. Back to the book. The letters are written mainly between Helene Hanf and Frank Doyle, one of Marks & Co.'s book buyers. They start in 1949 and end in 1969. There isn't much of a story to the book. The letters are short and little personal information is exchanged. They are written in a humorous tone though and you get to know a lot about Miss Ham's bizarre reading habits and attitude to books. And that's all I can say about 84 Charing Cross Road, the original novel. My edition also contains the sequel, The Duchess of Bloomsbury Street, which I thought is a clever idea because even though I liked 84 Charing Cross Road, I don't think I would have bought the sequel. The Duchess of Bloomsbury Street is not written in letters but in diary form. After the publication of 84 Charing Cross Road in New York, it was also published in England and the author was asked to visit London to help publicize the novel. This was in 1971. And as it was Helene Hunt's lifelong dream to visit London, she kept a diary. Just as in 84 Charing Cross Road, there isn't much of a story here, except for her meeting a lot of people and visiting the sites. The book is enjoyable mainly because the author seems to be rather strange. She is very charming, but not at all average. Another thing I liked about the book is how she compared London and New York, the city, the people, and the different use of language. Hmm. There's not a lot I can say about the book. I really enjoyed reading it, though I wouldn't recommend it to young readers as there's very little action and no fascinating story to it. It's more a memoir about a friendship and the love for a city. On another subject I almost reached 200 subscribers and I promised to do a Q&A video then. So this is your last chance to ask me something. Follow this link and leave your question in comments. Thank you all so much for subscribing, watching and liking what I do and see you all tomorrow for Bookshop Tuesday.